Hi, Sean. Uh, Adam Benini, WGRZ TV. Hope you get back at a reasonable time. And yeah. um, I guess uh, after kind of evaluating things, I got two for you today. Uh, yeah. The first is after evaluating things, kind of taking a good look at that game. At this point, four games in, what's your overall evaluation of where your team stands at 4-0? Yeah, I mean, there's there's a, been a lot of good. Um, certainly appreciate how hard our, our players work, how hard they play, uh, how hard the staff is working in all, all areas of our staff. Um, you know, so good to be 4-0, Adam. We acknowledge that. Uh, also, with an eye on our growth and, and the future, right? We have to continue to grow and build our football team, um, you know, so we can complement one another. The offense, defense, and special teams all working hand-in-hand, -hand, complementing one another. And, and the second one is, and I, I asked you this last night, it was probably not the best time to ask you it, you know, right after the game. Uh, but I guess reports this morning out of Nashville, no new positive tests. So it seems as if they're making some progress down there. What's your understanding of that situation? And how is it impacting, if at all, your preparation as you look toward this week now? Yeah, we are monitoring that situation. Um, uh, and, and, and having said that, we're preparing to play. Uh, it's a good football team we're going to face. Uh, it's a team that's been to the uh, AFC Championship game and uh, deep into the playoffs. So uh, a good opponent down there, um, and uh, it'll be a big challenge for us. Can you gauge a level of concern on your team generally? I think our guys are focused. Uh, this is a focused football team. They're aware of uh, certainly the situation down there, but they're also, uh, I think they, they're confident in, in – uh, the processes that are in, processes that are in place, uh, both at the league level and and uh, and and what we're doing here. So, uh, listen, that's not to say that, as you know, Adam, um, that we won't have a positive at some point, right? We're just we're going to do the best we can and continue to be uh, diligent in our approach. Um, and uh, again, that's it's a, it's an uphill battle and it's a challenge. To this point, our team has, has uh, handled it extremely well. All right. Thank you, Sean. Sure. Hey, Sean. John Scott. Um, after looking at the film, what was its second half, particularly in the fourth quarter, that, that your defense was doing that, that at least results-wise, seemed like it was different than what we've seen from that unit at least the, the two weeks prior? Yeah, I mean, it, it really, I thought their personality started to show. Uh, John, with, with how they played, they were playing uh, with, like their hair was on fire um, with a great attitude, and, and they were attacking the opponent, uh, starting with Josh's punch out near the sideline and then uh, a couple of other key stops, uh, Ed Oliver on the fourth and one, and then also Q. Jeff's uh, sack and, and fumble and fumble recovery there. So uh, the, rush, the rush was complementing the, the coverage, and the coverage was complementing the rush better than it had to that point uh, uh, in the game. And I know you had mentioned after the game yesterday that Leslie was dialing up more pressure. Is, is that, was that a collaborative conversation between the two of you, or was that just something he, he decided and, and started firing off on his own? Well, we're always talking, and, and at the end of the day, it's Leslie, Leslie's uh, the one making the calls, and, and I thought he really did some good things in the second half there. Thanks, Sean. Hey, Sean, uh, Sal Mayoran in Rochester. Um, I got a couple things for you. First off, it looked like, you know, what you did with, at the guard position yesterday when Brian went out, you left Cody at left guard. Is that, it's looking like that is going to be the plan moving forward. But I guess what I want to ask you is, what did you see in Cody that makes you think that, you know, he's wrapped as a right tackle. Do you just think he's better off inside based on what you've seen these first four weeks? Well, I don't like moving guys around all that much. I mean, I think it is, it's nice to have position flexibility, Sal, but at the end of the day, um, you, can, you can hurt yourself if you move, move a guy around too much. So, um, you know, he's playing guard, and, and that's where we plan on keeping him to this point, at this point. Um, you know, and he's, I'll tell you, the, he, he's a tough sucker, man. He's, he uh, played through some things yesterday, and, and uh, I know he's on the injury report today, but um, you know, a lot of respect for uh, how he plays and, and how he's able to push through things mentally. And if I could ask you, uh, when you went up 23-16 early in the fourth quarter, did you consider going for the two? And if not, why did you, why did you not go for the two points there? When we, so when we scored, 
to go he up. He up 23-16, so if you kick the point, it's still a one-possession game. You didn't know he was going to miss, obviously. But had you gone for two and made it, it becomes a two-possession game. Did you right. consider doing that at any point last night? Yeah, we always talk about those uh, situations, even honestly, Sal, before they come up. Uh, I've got two guys in the booth that do a great job, and Mark Lubick and Dennis Locke for me from an analytics standpoint and, and number standpoint. So we're always having those discussions even before we score in those situations. Okay. Thanks, Sean. Sure. Hey, Sean, good to see you. Um, just want to ask you, I think in, it was in August. It was definitely before the season started. Um, someone had asked you about the naysayers and kind of the doubters um, facing Josh, Josh Allen. And you said something to the effect of, um, you know, it's understandable until he silences that um, it's going to continue to come up. What, do you think that he's done enough to, uh, to silence that so far? Well, he's certainly off to a good start. Heather and, and I'm extremely proud of him and, and uh, Coach Dable and Coach Dorsey and the entire offense. Honestly, they've uh, they've really come together in a short amount of time, and and that that's a lot harder. Um, it's a lot easier said than done, and so uh, we have to continue to evolve and continue to look at our weaknesses so that we can continue to grow and become a better unit moving forward. Uh, I think to this point we're off to a good start, as is Josh, and and, uh, and as you know. Uh, a lot of the offense runs through the quarterback, and, and I'm really proud of Josh. Um, I thought he had a really good day yesterday, all but for about one or two plays there, uh, which I know he wants back, as, as we all do. So, uh, But, hey, there's, there's a lot of room for growth for all of us, and I'm excited about uh, us getting back in here and, and having a good week of practice. When you look at where the offense is now and really just the, you know, the team as a whole, how do your expectations with the – the unique, you know, the virtual off season and the shortened preseason and things like that. And the shortened amount of time you guys were able to have together before the season started, where do your expectations, your expectations coming in, how do they compare to that, to where the team is now? Do, do they live up to that? Are they, are they, do they exceed those expectations? Well, we always have high expectations of ourselves. And I think that's a healthy, healthy balance there and a healthy approach, Heather. And, and uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of time went into our planning. Um, you know, practice is so important, and what we do in practice is, is so important to our success, uh, to getting our players in a position where they can come together uh, in a shortened offseason. Um, I'm really proud of the way the staff worked to do that. Thanks. Hey, Sean, Thad Brown, good to see you. appreciate it. Sure, Thad. League sent out a memo today reminding teams about uh, the COVID rules and threatening, among other things, forfeiture of draft picks, maybe even forfeiture of games. I wonder, have you seen the memo? And what was your reaction? And I think more specifically, do you think it was something that was necessary for the league to send out? I do. I appreciate the, the league uh, being firm with their approach. Um, and listen, we're trying to have a season. We're trying to, you know, play each week, one week at a time. And, and uh and keep the kind of the, the balance of the competitiveness uh, where it needs to be. And uh, so I appreciate the leadership uh, from the league uh, taking that very firm approach, in my opinion. Uh, it, it's necessary, especially with uh, what we're trying to accomplish uh, for all the way back from the draft to the conclusion of our season and crowning a champion uh, when the time is right. And then could you, any injury updates, I guess specifically uh, Winters, uh, Josh Allen and uh, Matt Milano? Yeah, winners is day to day. Um, you know, Milano is probably going to be a week to week type of situation. Uh, and and who else? I'm sorry, who else? Josh Allen. Just checking with Josh Allen's shoulder. Yeah, Josh is in in pretty good pretty good shape as of this morning. Okay, thanks, Sean. Appreciate it. Sure. Thanks, Dad. Hey, coach. As you turn the page to playing the Titans, uh, this is a team that you're now facing for the third straight year. Uh, the last two games, pretty close, one-score games. Why is it important, just like I mean, any team, to not take this team lightly, even if they have been online and virtual for the last week and haven't been back in their facilities yet? Well, when you look at it, honestly, you know, Maddie, they, they've gotten a lot of rest probably over the last couple, over the last X amount of days, so they should be fresh. Uh, their team. Uh, but just focusing on our, on our team, uh, this is a good football team we're going to face. Uh, like I said earlier, they went to the AFC Championship game last year and, and we're up on the Chiefs uh, you know, into the game there. And uh, we know that the talent that they have on that roster and, and we're playing at their place. So, uh, you know, listen, all, the, all those things are, are reasons why we need to have our focus in the right 
uh, right spot uh, and right away this week as we move forward here. Thanks, Coach. Sure. Hey, Sean. Um, I want to ask you a little bit about uh, Ken Dorsey. You know, obviously we talk a lot about, you know, Brian as his obvious impact on Josh and this offense. But from your perspective now in a little bit over a year, what impact has Ken made and how important has he been in this whole process with the offense? Yeah, Ken's done a really nice job. Um, you know, let's not forget we brought him in last year. So he's just been here just over a year. And I think that dynamic between the offensive coordinator, the quarterback, and in this case, the quarterback's coach is an important one. Uh, those relationships can get sideways awful fast. And, and it takes an unselfish man of high character to be able to balance that and handle it the right way on a day-to-day -day approach. Um, because there's times when the coordinator is going to come in and trump maybe what's already been said. So uh, that said that both Brian and, and Ken, um, you know, those voices that, that are in Josh's ear, ears can be at times too much at times, right? If they're not, especially if they're not saying the same thing consistently. So that's a, that's a very uh, delicate uh, relationship there. And, and one that's all, you know, although it's delicate, highly important to, to Josh's success and to our team's success. Um, and on the injuries, um, what is uh, Matt Milano's injury? You said he's week to week. Yeah, he's dealing with a pack right now. Pack, pack. Okay. And Levi Wallace, any update on him? Uh, same. He's week to week right now. Gotcha. Thank you so much, Sean. Sure. Hey, Sean, last night we heard energy and, and juice so many times from, from the guys, especially guys on defense. And – I was wondering how big of an impact does the lack of a crowd have on a defense? It, it feels like that unit as a whole it really thrives on, on emotion and energy and hearing them say things like, you know, it's dead silent out there and it's weird. It makes me think, wow, is it really that big of an impact not having a crowd? Well, I think it is. A, it's a significant impact, I believe, for, for a lot of us as competitors. I mean, you grow up, even playing pop one or AU sports. And there's, you know, at least you got, uh, you know, your mom or your dad or your, your grandma, or your grandpa out there or, or your neighbors or what it, whatever it is, or your, or your buddy's parents out there, you know? And so it's, it's, uh, it is, it is different. Uh, but that said, our guys have adjusted extremely well to it. And I love, I love, I hear those guys and their self-talk that they use during the game or in pregame warmups to get themselves going and locked in and, Sometimes having to reset during a game, you can hear the self-talk, and I think it's really cool to to uh, to, to experience. Self-talk, like just the the self pumping themselves up. Yeah, hey, or they're you know saying, hey, lock in here, man, lock in, you know, and they're talking to themselves a lot of times. I think that's uh, that's the really cool part about it is to hear that uh, up close and personal, man. Is is you know, I think a, a big part of the mental part of the game and the mental edge that that elite competitors possess. I guess with crowds there, it's not something readily heard from the sideline, huh? That's right. Yeah. All right. Hey, appreciate you, Sean. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Hi, Sean. Uh, kind of going off that, Harrison Phillips, Reed Ferguson, and and Matt Barkley all tweeted at at the governor today, kind of trying to drum up support, I, I guess, for um, you know getting fans into your home games. Uh, what what was your thoughts on on those guys kind of taking it upon themselves a little bit there? Yeah, well, listen, they're they're good guys. I, I think it's coming from a good good uh, good place in their hearts. Uh, they only want what's best for for obviously you know our community number one, and then and then uh, our team number two. And and so um, if as long as it's coming from a good place, which I know it is, with those three young men you mentioned, uh, yeah, I'm all for it. And uh, that said, we do need to focus on on the task at hand this week as we transition into, uh, into the Titans preparation this week. Yeah. What's that, that balancing act? I know you talk about controlling the controllables and I guess in a way they're trying to make that a controllable a little bit with the platform that they have, but I guess there, there's a balancing act there. Cause you got a, you got a game this week and it's not at home, you know, so that that's not really on the table, I guess. Yeah. Listen, we always want to be a positive, uh, you know, impact and, and uh, resource in our community as a football team, as an organization. And I appreciate those guys trying to be a positive light in our community uh, for the betterment of our community. Um, so at the same time, you know, like I said, those guys are all professionals and, and I expect that they'll transition here to getting focused on a really good Tennessee football team here uh, as we turn the page tomorrow. 